Hello everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to get a spigot server in Minecraft 1.15.1. We're going to be going over every single step of getting a spigot server set up and all of it. It is all going to be covered in this video from setting up the spigot server to allowing your friends to join the spigot server to, you know, everything. Everything is covered in this video step by step by step by step. So yeah, we're going to be going over all of it. Now, the first thing I do want to mention is that this is not meant for everyone to join. It's just meant for your friends, the, your family, people that you can trust. And that is because it is hosted on your own computer and your own IP address. And with your IP address, people can do things such as DDoS you and take your internet offline and be really annoying, make your internet super slow. And on top of that, they can also figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates, city, all of that can be found via your IP address. That is why it is so important to keep this to just your friends and family. On top of that, it is hosted on your own computer, right? It's using your own computer's resources and you're gonna need a decent computer. It doesn't have to be like a top of the line computer i9, but it needs to be a pretty good Intel or AMD processor and at least 16 gigabytes of RAM to be able to host your server and play Minecraft all at the same time. So that is something I do like to say up front. But don't worry, I do have a solution for you. If you don't have a computer that's good enough, right? Like your computer can play Minecraft, but that's about it. Maybe it even struggles a little bit to play Minecraft. Or you wanna make a public server, a server that's available to everybody, right? Like the person that lives across the world to the person that lives next door that you for some reason never met. What if you want everyone to be able to join your server? Well, if that's the case, you need to get a server through Apex Minecraft Hosting. Apex Minecraft Hosting offers incredible 24 hour servers, so they're up 24 seven, seven days a week, and they're DDoS protected, so you don't have to worry about that, while also being hosted on Apex Minecraft Hosting's hardware. Meaning if your computer isn't good enough to host a server, it doesn't matter. As long as you can join a server like Hypixel or our server, play.breakdowncraft.com, you can join an Apex Minecraft hosting server. Speaking of our server, our server, play.breakdowncraft.com, is actually hosted on Apex Minecraft hosting. So we use Apex to host our own server. So we truly do put our money where our mouth is. We love Apex and they were generous enough to sponsor this video on starting a spigot server today. And we love them so much. It makes perfect sense. So go check out Apex at the first link down below the breakdown .xyz slash Apex to get your spigot server set up with no port forwarding, nothing like that. All you need to do is get your server set up, click a few buttons and you're done. You've got it, you can give the IP to anyone, no problems, and it's absolutely incredible. So again, you can check out Apex at the first link down below the breakdown, .xyz slash Apex. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and get your Spigot server set up. So what you wanna do is go to the second link down below, and that's gonna take you here. This is the Spigot download page, and once you're here, we're downloading for, as you can see, version 1.15.1 here. So you wanna come under version 1.15.1, come over and click the yellow download button to the right of it. It would then take us off to this like download landing page. And here you want to click on, you're about to download spigot 1.15.1.jar. So you want to click on spigot 1.15.1.jar there. When you click on that, it will download in the bottom left. If you're on Google Chrome, you will need to keep this file. It's safe to keep as long as it says spigot in the title, which ours does. On Mozilla Firefox, it's going to open in the center of your screen where you want to click save to save the file on Mozilla Firefox. It's safe to save as long as it does say spigot on the file name. Now we can go ahead and minimize our browser and here on our desktop, we do have the spigot 1.15.1.jar file that we downloaded. Now what we want to do is go ahead and right click, create a new folder. You can title this folder whatever you want. I'm going to name it play.breakdowncraft.com though, because that is our incredible Minecraft network server. We have two incredible grief protected survival servers, medieval survival with over 30 quests and a player based economy and aquatic survival with a slash shop based economy. And we do have custom skyblock as well with OP enchants, custom islands, and an incredible slash mine based system. It is awesome. So come play with this play.breakdowncraft.com is the IP. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and then take our spigot 1.15.1.jar and drag it in to the newly created folder we have in our desktop. And by the way, if spigot isn't on your desktop, it is in your downloads folder. And you can find that by clicking on the little windows icon from it in the top left of my screen. For you, it's in the bottom left of your screen most likely. But that little windows icon in the top or bottom left of your screen. And then go ahead and type in downloads, right like so. You'll then have this downloads file folder in windows. Click on that and spigot 1.15.1.jar will be in here. You might not have .jar at the end as well. It's fine, just be spigot 1.15.1, but just take that and drag it into the folder on your desktop. And then go ahead and open up the folder on your desktop. And then what you wanna do is go ahead and rename this file. So right click on it, click on rename, and then it might not have the .jar at the end, and that's fine if it doesn't, but just take in whatever it highlights and change it to spigot. 
and then boom, hit enter. There you go. By the way, if you do want the .jar on the end, click on View up here, and then click on File Name Extensions. As you can see, it made the .jar go away from me, but if you want to turn it on, make sure that File Name Extensions is clicked and that .jar will appear. Now what we want to do is go ahead and right click in this folder, create a new text document, so new text document here, and then it's going to, it's going to create something called new text document. Go ahead and leave it titled that, that's fine. Open up the newly created new text document and then go to the description of this video. And in the description, you will find this. This is basically different codes for the amount of RAM you want your server to have. Two gigabytes, three gigabytes, or four gigabytes. I'm gonna go ahead and do the four gigabyte one because that's just what makes the most sense. For me, however, you can run a Spigot server on two gigabytes usually with not much of any issues whatsoever. But then we're gonna go ahead and copy from Java to pause. So copy from Java to pause under whichever amount of RAM you want and then paste that in your new text document. Then you want to go ahead and click File, Save As on your new text document. Then the file name is going to be run.bat, exactly like that, run.bat. And then the save type as is going to be all files. Then you want to go ahead and click the Save button here. And then in the background back there, you'll see the run.bat file appear. You can go ahead and delete the new text document you created. Now you can double click on the run.bat file and it will go ahead and start your Spigot server right on up. However, fair warning, it's going to fail. It's not gonna work this first time because you need to agree to the Minecraft EULA. So we're gonna go ahead, let this start up. It will start up after 20 seconds. For some reason it says it's an outdated build even though it actually isn't very weird to me on that. But nevertheless, after 20 seconds it will go ahead and update. And then as you can see, you need to agree to the ULA. Awesome, press any key to continue. And when you do that, it's going to close out of that program. Now you'll have this EULA.txt. If you don't have this EULA.txt or it just doesn't run the run.bat file, first off, make sure that this is called spigot.jar or just spigot if you don't have that file name extensions clicked. If it, if it is, you're good to go and you can continue on. However, if it's not, that's probably your issue. However, what if it is and you're still not being able to run the run.bat file? Well, no worries. Go to the description down below and download Java. This is how to download and install Java for Minecraft servers. This goes over exactly what you need to do to get Java for your Minecraft server set up. And then if you go through this and it still is yet not working, you need to run the jar fix, which you can check out in the description down below, how to use the jar fix to repair .jar files on your PC. Once you run the jar fix, all of the .jar files on your computer will work with Java once again, and you'll be good to go. Now we can go ahead and minimize our browser, and we need to agree to this eula.txt. So let's go ahead and double click on that, and it'll automatically open with Notepad. And you wanna to go to this link right here, and as long as you agree to the Minecraft eula, you wanna come here and change eula equals false to eula equals true. T-R-U-E, exactly like that. So EULA equals true, all lowercase, all one word. Do not put any spaces or anything around EULA equals true. It has to be that exact line, exactly like that. And then go ahead and do file, save. Now, if you double click on the run.bat file, your server will start on up. However, at this point, I do want to mention that this is not going to be joinable by your friends unless you port forward. So your server is set up at this point. It's gonna work and it's gonna have like a world folder with a world in it and you can install plugins on it and you can test them yourself, but your friends can't join your server. And to do that, we're going to need to port forward. So I'm gonna show you every single step of port forwarding a Minecraft server and walk you through it all. We've got tons of documentation and things to help you out along the way. So if you have had trouble port forwarding in the past, this is going to help you because we have so much documentation to help you out. But nevertheless, as you can see, everything is starting up. We do have the spigot.yml file there, proving that this is in fact a spigot server, as well as the bucket.yml and the server.properties file. Kind of, you know, goes, uh, spigot server is only gonna have the spigot.yml, a bucket server is only gonna have the bucket.yml, and a just vanilla server is only gonna have server.properties. But a spigot server is gonna have all three. It's kind of overwhelming, but nevertheless, there we go. As you can see, done, the server has in fact started up. So let's go ahead and port forward to allow your friends to join. To do that, come over here into CMD, and first off, stop your server. So just type STOP in the command prompt over here, and it's going to close everything down and stop the server. Now we can press any key to continue, and go ahead, and port forward. So the first thing we want to do is click on the little windows icon. For me, it's in the top left of my screen. It's going to be in the bottom left of your screen, most likely, but that little windows icon in the top or bottom left of your screen, click on that and then go ahead and type in CMD. You'll then have this command prompt right here. Then go ahead and click on that command prompt. And in here, you want to type in IPCONFIG. IP config, all one word, exactly like that. IPCONFIG, IP config, all one word, and then hit enter. 
It'll then give you a bunch of stuff that you really will never have to care about. But there are two numbers here that we do care about, and that is the IPv4 address and the default gateway. Now, before you go ahead and copy those down, make sure you're copying the correct ones. So the IPv4 address is the IPv4 address. Let's go ahead and open up Notepad and copy that over. So we're just going to copy over here IPv4, and that is going to be, for us, as you can see right here, 192.168.1.123. Now, we're also going to need our default gateway, but we only need the simple default gateway. We don't need this one with FE, 80, 96, 10, 3, E, F, F. We don't need that one. We don't need that. If there's any letters in there, if that's not the correct one, you need the one that's just numbers, which is on the second line here. So for us, that is going to be 192.168.1.1. See, the one on the second line that's just numbers, that's the one we need, 192.168.1.1. Awesome stuff there. Now we can go ahead and close out of the command prompt because everything we need is right here. Now let's go ahead and make this compatible for your server. So what we want to do is open up the server.properties file here. See that? Double click on that. It may ask you if you want to open it in Notepad. You do want to open it in Notepad. And then we want to scroll down until we see server-ip equals. See that? Server-ip equals. And then directly next to that, we want to put in our IPv4 address. So we can come over here into Notepad, copy our IPv4 address, and paste that next to server-ip equals. So in our case, 192.168.1.123, but your IPv4 address is most likely different. So let's go ahead and click File, Save there. And now we can go ahead and port forward. To do that, you want to open up your browser. And then in your browser, you want to open up a brand spanking new tab. And then up here in the search box where you would normally type in something along the lines of, I don't know, breakdowncraft.com or the breakdown.xyz or youtube.com, you would go and type in your default gateway. So what we want to do here is go ahead and copy our default gateway right here and then just paste it up here into our browser, right right to where you would normally type in a website and hit enter. Now you're going to see a page that most likely looks completely different from what you're seeing on my screen right now, right? I'm going to go ahead. When this is loading up. Once it's loading up, I'm going to have to sign out. But there's one thing that everybody is going to have in common and that is a login box. So you will have a login box like this of some sort. It'll ask for a username or an email or something and a password, most likely a username and password. Only Linksys and a few other routers allow you to actually create an account to log into your router from anywhere. That's pretty cool. But nevertheless, most likely you just have a username and a password. So what do you do? Right, what do you enter in here? Your Wi-Fi password? No, that's not it. It's not your Wi-Fi password. What you want to do is get the user's username and password for your specific router using the tutorial in the description down below. And this is our tutorial on how to find your router's password. We've helped over 150,000 people find their router password and log into their router. As you can see, we have method one, method two, method three, method four, method five. However, most people find it, 99% of people find it from method three or above. So one, two, and three will most likely help you out the most. And then after that, you can use four or unfortunately contact your ISP if you have to. But usually one through three will get you settled. Once you've figured out your router's password, you can then come over here, enter it in to your router, right like so, and then sign right on in. Once you sign into your router here, you will most likely be met with yet again a completely different screen. Completely different screen from what you see here. But that is okay. Because not only am I going to show you and tell you all of the different terms that port forwarding could be on your router, which, by the way, you can't break anything on your router as long as you only save the settings for port forward. You can click everywhere, right? You can just click all over this router from you know here over to here, and you, you can click everywhere. It does not matter, and you're not going to break anything as long as you don't save anything except your port forward. So don't worry about that. But look around for it and I'm going to give you all the different terms that you can find for your port forward and that a port forward could be called. However, we do have this tutorial on how to port forward your router. It goes through all of the top routers out there today from Netgear to Linksys to Verizon to AT&T to TL Link to Cisco. It is all covered in that video step by step how to port forward on all of those routers. I would recommend anyone watch that video even if you don't have a router on that list. And that's because most routers are made by a select few companies. So you're going to see how that router or your router is going to be done via another router on that list. So it's worth a watch and then going into your router. However, I am going to go over common terms here. So for me, my port forward is in security. 
For you, it could also be in security, but it could be in the advanced tab. It could be in the admin or administration tab. It could be in the apps and gaming tab. It could be in the port forwarding slash port triggering tab. It could be in the port triggering slash port forwarding tab. It could be in port forwarding slash port triggering. It could be in port forwarding. It could be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It could be in NAT gaming, NAT gaming. It could be in NAT port forwarding, NAT port forwarding. Right, But overall, what you're looking for is port forwarding. So for me, again, it is in security. Then it is in apps and gaming. Like I said, that could be a name for it, apps and gaming. Then it is in single port forwarding. So apps and gaming, single port forwarding. And then finally, we can add a new single port forward. For you, you may not have it add a new single port forward. For you, it may just be like this huge list, almost like this right here, right? Just this huge list all the way down the page, all blank boxes. That's fine too. Whatever it is for you is perfectly fine. However, for me, I have to click add a new single port forward. Then for application name or ID, this is just going to identify the port forward later. Then for port, whether it's external port or internal port, port one or port two, if it says the word port at all, you're gonna put 25565, right? So external port, 25565. Guess what, internal port, oh, there's that word, port. We're gonna put 25565 in there. For your protocol, we're gonna do TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. Either one works, but you wanna make sure both protocols are selected. Then for device IP, that is going to be that IPv4 address that we got earlier. So device IP or local IP, that is going to be that IPv4 address we got earlier. In our case, 192.168.1.123. Now you may not have a device IP, it might just say device or something like that, and you have a huge list of all of the devices connected to your internet. If that's the case, select the computer that you're setting up the server on. That's what you wanna do. Go ahead and put that in there, and then you're good. Now, at this point, most people can click save and click apply, and guess what? Your port forward is done. However, there are a few people who need an external or outside IP for your port forward. Luckily, every single person watching this tutorial also needs their outside or external IP to join their Minecraft server. So let's go ahead and get that. To do that, go to the description down below and you will find a link to this, what's my IP address.com. Once you're here, you're gonna go ahead and copy your IP address from here, which by the way, is blacked out for you because guess what? You don't wanna give this out to everybody and anybody. We talked about this in the front end of the tutorial, but there it is, your public IP address. And you can see for me the 211. That's gonna be the same as what you see in Minecraft later. Just so you know, I'm using the exact same IP. I'm not trying to play any trickery. But as you can see over here, you do have your country, your region, your city, your zip code, and even your latitude and longitude coordinates down all from your IP address. That's why it's so important you only give this out to people you trust. Nevertheless, once you've got your public IP address copied here, you can then come back over to your router. If you need to paste it in for your port forward, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, we can minimize our browser and start our server right on up. Your port forward is done, everybody. The hard part is done. At this point, you just join your server. That is all we're doing. So I'm launching up Minecraft 1.15.1. Our spigot server is getting itself started right on up, and then we'll be able to join the server. I do wanna say that if you can't join via your public IP address, that's not a big problem. You will be able to join via your IPv4 address. Sometimes computers are weird, and you have to join via the IPv4 address instead of your public IP address. However, your friends will always join off of that public IP address we just copied from whatsmyip.com. So you'll give your public IP address to all of your friends, and you can join off of your local IP address. However, if your friends can't join off of your local IP address, it's due to a firewall. Whether it's Windows Defender or a firewall on your router, that's where it is. You don't need to add an exception for Minecraft and the port forward in your firewall. But nevertheless, for us, we can just go ahead and click on multiplayer, and then we can click direct connect. And then once we click direct connect, we can paste our public IP address in there. As you can see, 211 at the end there, the same as what we saw earlier. And then we can click join server. We'll then see us join right on in, right over here into the Minecraft server. As you can see, there it is. Next game says joined in. 
we are loading the terrain and here's the spawn of our server. So there you have it. That is how you can make a spigot server in Minecraft 1.15.1. If you do have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. And I'm sure you do want to add plugins to this server. And we do have an in-depth tutorial that is showing on your screen right now on how to add plugins to your spigot server. You might also want to be able to do things like slash game mode creative. If that's the case, you can opt yourself. So come back over to your like server console over here and just type in op space your username. So op your username and hit enter. And now I'm opt and I can do things like slash game mode creative. But nevertheless, if you want to add plugins to your server, there is a tutorial on your screen for how to do that right now. But nevertheless, my name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown. Enjoy your Minecraft 1.15.1 spigot server, and I am out. Peace.